First of all, I'd like to say if this is your first time here at the Life Church, welcome. We are so happy to have you guys, and we'd love to get to know more about you. Uh, so if you would, you can raise your hand. The ushers will find you, and you can fill out a visitor form. Or if you're not wanting to do that, um, you could fill out the form online on our church app. If you, that's a little bit easier, I suppose. Um, so now we got a bunch of announcements we're going to jump into and some really fun announcements as well. All right, starting off, we have prayer groups Tuesdays here at the church at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6.15 a.m. Men's group here at the church Tuesdays at 6 a.m. and youth meetings Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. All youth from 7th to 12th grade meet at the church. And we got upcoming youth camp August 8th through 12th in the call for teens going into 7th grade through 12th grade. Um, to register online, go to lifechurchboise.com slash youth, or you can contact Reese Moore for more information. Reese is our youth pastor here. He's an amazing guy who is not here today. Okay, and uh, so next Saturday, July 23rd, is our next uh, Carbonate Prayer Hike. Please join me, 8 a.m. at the bottom of Carbonate. Everyone's welcome, as long as you can make it up the switchbacks to the top of Carbonate. It's a great time of fellowship, uh, some physical activity, and some good prayer um, on top, just praying over our valley. Um, okay, guys, if you are new here to Life Church, or even not that new and you've just been coming here for a few months, we would really, really like to get to know you, and so we're inviting you all to our Connection Luncheon. Uh, luncheon will be directly after service next week, and that's going to be July the 21st, 24th. That's going to be in the large Sunday school room in the back. Please RSVP on the sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, and we look forward to getting to know you better. Again, it doesn't have you, you know, if you've been even coming here for a year and you don't feel like you've connected with uh, the pastors and the staff, please show up. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to get to connect and fellowship with you. Uh, we got a treat coming up on August 7th. You would think it's Christmas, but it's not. Dick Williams will be our guest speaker for an outdoor service and potluck afterwards. Uh, if your last name begins with A through G, please bring a dessert. If your last name begins with H through Z, please bring a side salad or a fruit to share. Again, mark that in your calendars. It's August 7th, Dick Williams for an outdoor service, potluck. It's going to be amazing. And then another really cool thing, we have worship night. That's going to happen Wednesday, August 17th at 6.30 p.m. Here at the church, please contact the church office if you plan to come and need child care. But this will be a great time that we can just all come together and really just worship the Lord uh, for a, a longer period than we normally do. So this is going to be amazing as well. And then, sorry, we have... A men's fellowship opportunity with the Calvary Bible Church. That's going to be next Saturday, July 23rd at the famous world-class shooting facility of Gary and Mary McStay. We'll be meeting with the men from Calvary Church for shooting, a barbecue lunch, and fellowship. Show up at the McStay Ranch, uh, Willow Creek, just past County Line L Road on US 20 at 10 a.m. We're going to be shooting clays and long-range shooting and then lunch at noon. If that interests you at all, gentlemen, please contact Rob Cronin. Rob, raise your hand over there uh, if you would like to go. And you can RSVP to him by Wednesday. Um, you can email him at robcronin at rixonandcronin.com. Or you can give him a call or a text at 208-720-2211. Sorry, guys, this is really last minute. Um, so if you need any more information, like I said, please talk to Rob after church. We got Children's Church is happening today for nursery th through sixth grade. Adam is six, so my wife will be taking those responsibilities. You guys are going to have a fun time. And that's it for now. <laughs> Thank you. All right. A few little funnies that I found online uh, today. Uh, these are church uh, bloopers in the bulletin. The senior choir invites any member of the congregation who enjoys, it was supposed to be singing, who the senior choir Im invites any member of the congregation who enjoys sinning to join the choir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, one, one little announcement said, Barbara remains in the hospital and needs blood donors for more transfusions. She is also having trouble sleeping and requests tapes of Pastor Nelson's sermons. <laughs> Put you right to sleep. Applications are now being accepted for two-year-old nursery workers. I love this one. This is, uh, the ladies of the church have cast off clothing of every kind. <laughs> they may be seen in the basement on Friday afternoon. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorites. Too. The associate minister unveiled the church's new tithing campaign slogan last Sunday. It, say, it says, I upped my pledge, up yours. All right. Father, we just thank you today for your word. Lord, just saturate us by the Spirit of God in your love, in your mercy, God, in your grace. Open up the windows of heaven this morning that we can hear your word and apply it to our lives. God, it's, it's not our way, it's your way. God, we want to hear your voice, and the voice of another we don't want to heed to. So God, I just thank you for bringing in each and every person today. God, meet them where they are, right where they're seated today, God. Impart to them words of life, words of deliverance, words of encouragement, in the midst of whatever they're going through, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So our jumping off verse in this 10 steps during transition, our jumping off verse is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 20 through 23. We'll read that real quick. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, what is the meaning of the testimonies, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your, our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to, you, say to the son, we were slaves of Pharaoh in, e in Egypt. How many of you know that we were all slaves at one time? We're all slaves to the, to the enemy. And Jesus has delivered us from the hand of the enemy. He has taken us. How many of you know he's broken the chains? over your life. When you ask Christ to come in, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. It says, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders before our eyes, great and severe, against Egypt, Pharaoh, and all his household. And here's the line that I really want you to grab a hold of. Then he brought us out from there that he might bring us in. Everybody say, he brought us out, that he would bring us in. And it says, to give us the land which he swore to our fathers. Every word that God speaks over your life has the power of fulfillment. It has that power to go the distance. He's the author and what? The finisher of our faith. He's the perfecter of our faith. So we looked at two points so far. Uh, in the 10, we're not going to get to all 10. I can tell you that right now. Uh, how many of you realize that? We might get to one more, maybe two. Uh, the first point was realize that change is normal. Change is going to come during transitions in your life. And you know what? God has, has made you well able to withstand whatever comes in the change. There is godly change, and there is also demonic change. The, the enemy wants to conform you to the point where you go after what he wants instead of what God wants to stifle you in your walk with God. So realize that change is normal, and he's got your back. He's got you in the midst of that. Number two is, and we talked about this last week, and I want to say this just real quick. Uh, we probably opened up a huge can of worms uh, last week with this uh, arena of forgiveness. 
Uh, and, and I would like to say, you know, if you struggled with the message at all last week, it would be good to get with people that you can trust and that you can really look to, uh, uh, people that are spiritually way up here and godly and people that you respect and that you know and talk to them about this arena and this area of forgiveness. Uh, because there's, there's steps in that process. Uh, how many of you know God's forgiveness is just like that? But sometimes, you know, when we're dealing with unforgiveness in our life, we have to forgive ourselves. We have to give up, forgive others. And that's not an easy thing. We want to hold on to some of those things. We talked about that last week. We're not going to uh, belabor that in any way. So today's point and 10 steps that will help you in times of change and transition is admit that God is your source. Let's all say that. Say that to your neighbor just real quick, just real nice. Look at them in the eyeballs and say, admit that God is your source. It, believe me, if you can't admit it to your neighbor, you can't admit it to God. Admit that God is your source. Admitting is the first step to allowing God the reins of your life. Saying, God, I need you in every area. Is there some other source? Is there any other source than God in our life? When we finally admit that we are nothing without him, it can propel us to submit to his lordship in our lives. What is submitting? Submitting is coming under the, the Lord's hand of direction, protection, provision. It is to yield your will and the leading of your life to a God who loves you. Amen? I can submit to something like that. I look at the life of Peter after his denials at the cross. And the Lord met him on the shore and said, Peter, do you love me? And he went, asked him three different times. Let's read that portion in John chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. It says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, then feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And we don't have time to go into all the stuff in this portion of scripture because um, I, I want to get to the last part of this. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus looks at our life and he's looking at our heart. On the inside, isn't he? He's not looking at your clothes today. You know, they used to kick people out of the church when they wore shirts, shorts to church. Do you know that? Praise God, we're in the 2022. Amen? And we realize that God doesn't care. So Jason, you're okay. God's not looking at the color of your hair, whether you have hair or whether you don't. God's not looking at all these different things that we look at on the outside. God is looking at your heart. And if he said today, do you love me three times, you'd, you'd begin to wonder and, and doubt yourself on the inside. Why is he asking this question? Am I not showing my love? But Peter had all this junk, all this garbage from he was carrying into this conversation that he had denied him three times. And 
God and Jesus wanted Peter's full heart so that he could come to the fulfillment of his life as the chief apostle. But the only way you can come to fulfillment is if you really, truly learn to submit to God's will in your life and to submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus went on to say, he said, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, and let me say this, when Peter, when you were more immature, you girded yourself and walked where you wanted to. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, he looked at Peter and he said, follow me. How many of you are followers of Christ today? Raise your hand if you're a follower of Christ. In every area, God wants us to follow him. Go after his example. What's his example? When, when Jesus went into a village, he healed. When Jesus went into a village, he spoke and imparted words of life. When Jesus went in, he didn't, he didn't judge people. What did he do? He embraced people where they were. Right where they were. God knows your mess today. And there's a, there's a certain point, you know, Peter followed Christ for three and a half years. And you would have thought sometime in that before the cross that Peter would have absolutely 100% have given his whole heart to Jesus. And he said, Peter, do you love me? You really know when somebody's walking with you when you come into a place of conflict and they're willing to work out the conflict. They're willing to to look at what the Lord wants to do. Amen? And you're reconciled to the Lord. You're reconciled in that particular relationship and and. They, they submit to, uh, you know, any place of, of headship and leadership, uh, and, and you're able to walk together in a sense. There's going to be conflict in your life. And it's so important that we're plugged into the right source. Peter's source, you know what Peter's source was? Himself. His will, his determination. Every time you turned around in the scriptures, it was like Peter was sticking his foot in his mouth. He was saying the wrong things, doing the wrong things. One of the times Jesus had to look back at him and say, get behind me, Satan. You're not doing what the Lord wants. You're just doing what you want. Submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Admit that God is your source. And with that admitting, it's, it's almost like uh, almost confessing and declaration. God, you're my source. I don't want anything else to be my source. I don't want to look to this thing and that thing and, and my, my stance in this or, or if I went through certain classes. I, I, I need you. I need to hear your voice. I need you to teach me. I need you to walk with me. He's not pushing you away today. What is he doing? He wants to gather you. Man, he wants to grab a hold of you and walk through this life together with you. If you would just give your will to him and say, Lord, not my will, but yours, right? what he said before he went to the cross you know i could call i could jesus is 
words, you know, or Jesus' thought processes uh, could have been, I could call a thousand angels right now and obliterate all of the Roman army in one swipe so I don't have to go to the cross. But he submitted to God the Father. He said, not my will, but yours be done. How many of you know that's a hard place for us? It's like, I, I want to do my own thing. Sometimes we're asked to go different places and, and be at certain functions, and I don't want to go. I don't want to be around that. But Lord, in, in the whole scheme of things, do we have enough to say, Lord, do you want to use me somehow at this particular function, this place? I want you to close your eyes just real quick and just say, Lord, your will be done. Not my will. Your will be done. I see you as the source of of my life, okay? I see you as the source of my life. Okay. In the midst of change, sometimes our plans become superimposed over his. We draw from a well of self-sufficiency and end up drinking tainted dirty water. When we expect God's blessing to coincide with our decisions, and I emphasize our decisions and plans, we set ourselves up for failure. He wants our whole heart. He wants obedience. Allow God to set your course from the beginning. A source is a point at which something begins. It's a point of origin. Since God is creator and has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, we should have regular consultation times with the master and the inventor, the creator of our lives. Why? Because he's the source of life. Everything that's life goes back to him. When we veer off course, power and provision begins to dry up because we're not plugged into the source. So we have to stop allowing the enemy to drain us from being plugged in to the wrong power source. What is the power source of the enemy? It can be the devil's words that resonate even from a young child. Some of you might be today struggling with words that were spoken when you were younger, when you were a child, and you let those resonate in your life. Some are comparisons that you've made to people that are in the world or even other, other believers, and you want what they have. And you're comparing and, and you have this competitive thing going on. How many of you know that's a real detriment? Sometimes a power source can even be something like self-pity. Where, where people just, they're infused with this thing and they want... They want attention. They want to be seen. They, they, they want everybody to know that, hey, this has gone on in my life and you need to pity me. How many of you know that's not from God? It's not from God. God sees you in a different way and has made every provision for you in your life to walk victoriously. 
to walk as more than a conqueror in your life. But you've got to tap into that. That's the word source. It's time to unplug from a source with limited power. How many of you know that the enemy does have power? He does have power. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a struggle in your life. And he will, he will try to usurp his authority in your life wherever you allow him to come in and where those words are resonating inside of you. So it's time to turn it around. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to turn it around. It's time to unplug from a source with limited power and plug into the source that has unlimited power, which never faints or grows weary. Isaiah chapter 40, great portion of scripture, and most of you know the end part of this, but uh, it's just talking about exchanging strength with God, recognizing and admitting that he is your source. It says, have you not known, in Isaiah 40, verse 28, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to what? To the weak. When we can actually say, Lord, I need your help. You're humbling yourself before God. And what happens? The Holy Spirit, the helper comes in. That standby comes in and undergirds you in those areas of weakness. And actually the very weakness, that place that the enemy has tried to exploit in your life, that has been a stumbling block over and over and over again, God doesn't want it to be a stumbling block anymore. He wants it to be a stepping stone towards him. Amen? A stepping stone towards the greatness of God that he has called you to be a part of. He gives power to the weak in verse 29. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall doesn't matter you know i look at my grandsons and my two two two-year-old grandson he has it seems like unlimited energy just i mean i can't even corral him sometimes he just goes 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 if i just had you know the older i get the more i'm like i need that energy I, you know, I need like three cups of coffee instead of just one in the morning. I need that energy so I can go and do the things that I need to do in this life. It says, the young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait on the Lord. That is that, that process of exchange with God. As you wait upon him and you say, God, I need you. Lord. You see my weakness. You see where I fell yesterday and maybe the day before and maybe the day before. And I've just prayed today, God, that you would undergird me, that, God, you would break that cycle in my life. And, Lord, that I would begin to see your overcoming power in my life. Amen. And all of a sudden that weakness turns into a strength. And you're able to do things that you didn't even realize. There's more ability inside of you because of God's strength and his power and his determination and his will for your life. Amen? Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. I was over at Anderson the other day with John. and We were fishing out there catching bass. Oh, so nice. And this eagle came down and swooped down right along the the lake. And then all of a sudden it went way up and I could see it starting to rise. And it caught the thermals a little bit up there. And it just began to rise higher and higher. It was really cool. This, This eagle saw a fish that a guy caught in the middle of Anderson. He had it in the boat. He had it in the net. It was a pretty 
pretty nice sized fish, and this eagle swooped down by the boat to grab this fish that was on the boat. And the guy saw him at the last second and kind of went like this, you know, and he, and he, and he swerved. But the, just the, the power, but the swiftness of that eagle in flight, it was, just, it was just awesome. And here the Bible says, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. The Bible says, they shall run and not be weary. You know, our, our, one of our elders in our church, one of the leaders, uh, Dave Lapard, who sits up here in the front row, he's out camping this week. Dave, you need to be in church on Sundays, buddy. Uh, but he, this guy can run forever. He's like a marathon runner. I'm, I'm terrible at marathon running. I'm good at, give me a 100-yard sprint. More like a 40-yard sprint now. Uh, you know, time me in the 40 if you want. Time me in the 100 if you want. But that marathon thing is like, <sighs> you know, it's like I don't have the stamina, the stamina that I used to have and stuff. But the Bible says here when you get the energy of the Lord and the strength of the Lord, how many of you know you can run and not be weary? You will walk, the Bible says, and not faint. Um, and so we need to learn to exchange strength with the source of stability and strength. Most people struggle with trusting the Lord in certain seasons of life during hard times. Um, it, and it, here's the thing. It's okay to communicate those things to God of the way you feel. When you read the book of Psalm, how many of you know that David says over and over, the enemies are surrounding me. I feel all this pressure that's coming in, you know, and he just is, that's his heart cry. These things are happening. And how many of you know that all the way through the Psalms that David goes, but God, you are with me. Amen. He's your strong tower today. He's your source of strength. I'll be the first one to say sometimes I am weak. But, everybody say but. I love the buts of the Bible. But he is strong. Amen? He's strong in your life. The Lord of all creation has big shoulders. He can handle whatever you're going to say to him in that area of just being real. If we can't talk to God, who can we talk to? He can take anything you can dish out, but be ready for a life-transforming commitment on the other side. It made me think of my, one of my favorite movies is Forrest Gump. And how many of you remember, raise your hand if you saw the movie. Most have. Uh, just, a, just a great show, you know, of, of God using a goofy person in all these different ways and and them doing all these great things well in the movie he uh went to war and lieutenant dan you remember lieutenant dan who lost his legs in the movie so he's uh, he's totally mad at god and and he has a problem with god and and this particular portion of scripture here just reminded me just of lieutenant dan on the top of the mast and they're out doing shrimp fishing in the middle of a hurricane, in the middle of all the wind and the waves. And Lieutenant Dan is on the top of the mast, and he's going, come on, bring it on. How many of you know God has big shoulders? He can handle whatever you're going to throw his way when it comes to communication. And I have to say this, you know, there are going to be times in your life where you doubt, where you worry, where you have concern. How many of you know God has big enough shoulders to bear you up in that and to bring you to the other side of that? Because you just can't stay in doubt because in the place of doubt, there's always instability. You won't fulfill the plan of God if you stay in this place of doubt. But if you can allow God to get you to the other side, he said, we're going over to the other side. Wind and waves come in, 
the disciples freak out, and, and the disciples go, Jesus, he's asleep in the boat. Jesus, help us. But what did Jesus, we have to go back to those first words that Jesus said before he left the shore. Guys, we're going to the other side. There was transition that was going to happen in the disciples' life. They needed to step up in an arena and an area of faith in their life to get to the other side. Jesus said, you're going to get there. Let's go. And then all this stuff, all hell broke loose. Have you ever gotten a word from God? You wrote it down in your journal and you go, man, oh man, that was an awesome word. And then the next day, you are challenged on that very word that the Lord spoke. Right? Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. We see it all through the word. Joseph has a dream, blabs his dream to his whole family, and his family basically gives him the boot. They're all jealous. They throw him out. He's in the pit. He goes from the pit to the prison to the palace. All these things had to happen in, that, in his lifespan. But how many of you know he had to keep faith all the way through and believe God's word would come to pass in his life? Admit today that God is your source. If you're plugged into anything else, just go over there and unplug it. I tried to start my four-wheeler the other day. Went out there, nothing. I put it on a, a little trickle charger, nothing. It said on my trickle charger, it said, battery is dead. No source, no power, nothing. So I got my truck, my F-150. I, I, put, I, I put it on my uh, battery, on my F-150. Put it on my four-wheeler. And how many of you know that thing just started right up? And as long as I didn't turn it off, I could go anywhere I needed to go. As soon as I turned it off, at the gas station, history. And then I had to use the pull start for the first time in my life. <laughs> on it. And it started right up, like right there. But it was limited power because it wasn't plugged into the right thing. Amen? We've got to get to our, our lives to a place where we unplug from the TV, where we unplug from some of these things that we're into that we think are so vital in our life. Sometimes family, even, can be so pressing on us. You know, and I, I'm, a, I'm a big family guy. I love being around my family. We're, we're pretty much, our immediate family is all believers, and we, we come together. But sometimes in a, in a family, family takes precedence over God, what God would want. Even Jesus said, he said, they said to Jesus at one point, uh, your brothers and your sister and your, everybody's outside there waiting on you. And he goes, whoever does the will of God and whoever does the word of God, these, this is my family. Amen. Now, I might be stepping on some toes there because family is so important in our lives. It's not like you can just give your family away. Sometimes we want to. Here, take them. You be their brother. You be their sister. God's got to be first place. He's got to be the priority of your life. Until we come to that place where we put him as the priority, where we give him the uppermost in our heart, he's not the Lord of your life. And there's things that we will say to him, such as, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, but I won't do this and this and this. When he's the Lord of your life, You'll say, God, whatever it is. 
that's what I'll do. Point number three is admit that God is your source. Point number four is don't panic. And we're going to get to that next week. Tell your neighbor, say, don't panic. You know, today, I want you, if you're immediate family, I want you to grab a hold of the, that person's hand right beside you. Father, I just thank you, Lord, today. For hearts that are willing. For whatever you say, God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had to say that at one point. Whatever he says, do it. Do it. To the servant. God never fully calls you to something that you can just always do yourself. God calls you to do something out of the natural and that's in the supernatural power of God. Faith is in that realm. It's not in something that you see. It's in something that is in the unseen. The unseen. Emma and your husband... God's going to make a way. God's going to make a way for you guys. Where there seems to be no way. And bring you to a great place of stability and strength. Rely on him. Look to him. Sometimes we can't see it. How is this ever going to happen? God will make a way. Amen? God will make a way. Lord, I thank you for opening up the windows of heaven into people's lives today. Lord, let the writers write those books. Let the singers sing and write songs. Lord, let those businessmen have the wisdom of God for the hour that we're in. Give them wisdom in financial dealings. Cause those right doors to be open at the right time. God, today we, we want to unplug from any outside sources, any of those places that we've looked at that could be strengths in our life, but it's, it, it's there's limitations to that. So God, we want to be brought into your unlimited place. That place where we know it's you. God, you've, you've set it and you will perform it and God, you will bring it to fulfillment in our lives. God, I thank you for every person that you sent our way today. That the hand of God, the grace of God is in their life and on their life to do whatever it is that you've called them to do. Sometimes that's just being the best father that you can be, the best mother that you can be. Sometimes that's, that's just being the best employee for right now until God begins to open up things and his gifts and his calling are seen and discovered in your life. But we start where we're, where we're at, basically, where we are. I thank you for that. I thank you that in times of transition, God, that you have something good in this new season that you're bringing us into. Yes, there can be struggles, there can be pain, but Jesus, you took all that. You endured the cross for the joy that was set before you. And Lord, there's great joy in the fulfillment of your word in our lives. 
And Lord, we just give you the praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you guys to stand with me, and we're going to pray for a couple of people here just real quick. Um, Janine Bear's son is uh, in the hospital, and he's struggling. He had kidney failure, um, and he needs an absolute miracle in his life right now. How many of you know that God heals today? We have another one that's, that's struggling with cancer in her body. We, we've, we've seen God move on this, you know, Jesus healed in the Bible. We've seen healings manifest in different ways. And I just believe that we can pull on the grace of God and pull on the, the work that he's already done. The Bible says, with his stripes, we are healed and made whole. So let's just begin to pray and lift these two people up. One is struggling with cancer, but God can do anything. Nothing is impossible. And the other one has had kidney failure in the hospital. So Father, we just bring these two before you, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for your power that is present today as we all agree together, Lord, God, we pray that you would touch this person with cancer uh, today, God. Lord, that it would dry up at the root. God, no matter how far it has spread, God, there is nothing that's impossible with you. And God, we stand for the meaning and the purpose in this person's life in the name of Jesus. God, that you would, you would touch her. God, Lord, that you would manifest yourself to her. We rebuke the power of the enemy in Jesus' name. Every spirit of infirmity, you have to detach and go in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the manifest presence of Jesus coming into the room and touching both of these people. For Jake with this kidney failure, God. Lord, we know what the doctors are saying, but we know what Dr. Jesus says. We thank you, God, for the turnaround in his life. God, we thank you, Lord, God, that every fiber of, and cell of his body, God, lines up with your word in the name of Jesus. We speak strength to that body in the name of Jesus, that he'll rise up off that hospital bed Lord, and be a testimony for you and be a changed young man. I thank you for that, God. Lord, you're not done with him. And Lord, you're not done with this other one that's struggling with cancer, God. Lord, you're not done. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for, for just touching them right where they are today. And Lord, we just are quick to give you all the glory because Jesus, you are the healer. You're the healer. And we just give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, we want to thank you guys for coming today and, and being a part. Um, and uh, we're going to continue in this series as, as time goes on. And um, bring, bring some people. This is a great time during the summertime when we're uh, a, a little bit down with attendance and stuff. Bring somebody from the community. I feel like that they'd really benefit from this particular series that we're going into. Amen. So thanks, guys. Be blessed. Oh. <laughs> thanks, Mike. A few quick reminders before you guys get out of here. If you're wondering, um, have any questions about any of the upcoming events that we have, there are bulletins in the back. And um, the, the donation basket is in the back as well. Um, please feel free to just put your offerings in there. And please do not forget to sign up for the uh, next week's Connection Lunch. Again, we would love to see you. We'd love to get to know you. Please sign up for that. The sign-ups are back in the foyer. We love you guys. Have a great week.